raise it. This is just the beginning. They want to quadruple the tax up to 61 cents a liter. So you've got another 43 cents of carbon tax hikes coming if Trudeau is reelected in his coalition with the NDP. Every province has the opportunity to put forward its own plan. So all those premiers that are busy complaining about the price on pollution, but not putting forward a concrete alternative that they think would be better for their communities, are just plain politics. Well, that was Pierre Polyev there and the Prime Minister responding to pressure from several provincial leaders who spoke out against today's carbon tax hike. Now, despite a weeks-long campaign by premiers and the federal Conservatives, the carbon tax did go up today from $65 per tonne to $80 per tonne of greenhouse gas emissions. Now, most of you saw it at the gas pumps where you paid three cents more per litre. Today, Liberal Premier of Newfoundland and Labrador, Andrew Fury, wrote to Justin Trudeau calling for an emergency first minister's meeting to discuss alternatives to the carbon tax. Now, Fury argues the tax simply won't work because people in his province still need to travel by car. Writing, in part, we need a constructive approach to decarbonize our environment without placing the burden on individual families who simply do not have viable alternative options. He also wrote, I propose that you convene an emergency meeting of leaders from across our country to discuss these and other proposed alternatives. Should the Prime Minister call a meeting with all Premiers to talk about the price on pollution? Let's bring in the front bench for a different side of the carbon debate carbon tax debate. Sabrina Grover was a federal Liberal candidate in the 2021 election. She's now principal at Shakti Strategies, also known for calling into this show a little bit early. Uh, Shakir <laughs> Chambers worked in Prime Minister Stephen Harper's office before becoming policy advisor to the International Trade Minister. He's now principal at Ernst Cliff Strategies. Kathleen Monk here in studio, getting a giggle out of that one. The former <laughs> director of communications to the late Jack Layton. She's also the principal owner of Monk and Associates, and Laura Stone is a Queen's Park reporter for The Globe and Mail. Happy Monday to you all. Sabrina, sorry for that shot, but I couldn't <laughs> resist it, honestly. Uh, you know, I don't think that well, Ambassador <laughs> Kerry Buck understood it either, but that's fine. Um, so it's... <laughs> I'm going to start on this. It sounds like a number of premiers uh, would welcome a meeting. So should the Prime Minister call one at this point? I think it's interesting that the premiers are asking for a meeting on a carbon price, but not really coming to the table with any solutions uh, beyond the idea that they're just kind of complaining about the carbon price. Um, and, you know, even when they reflect on solutions that are not a carbon price, I think Scott Moe said it the other day, um, that he's considered all of the other options and none of them are as affordable as a carbon price. And so I think, you know, it is uh, incumbent upon the premiers to think about what is actually the affordability measures that they're bringing to the table, not just when it comes to carbon pricing or, or climate change, but also the other things that are coming up in their province, right? I think we've spoken on this show previously about Danielle Smith and how there isn't um, a provincial fuel tax uh, relief coming. Um, you know, I think you you just referenced that the minimum wage is going up. It's not going up in Alberta. So there's lots of other things that the provinces are doing not contributing to affordability uh, increasing. And so I think that if the, pre if the prime minister does call uh, a first minister's meeting, the outcome has to be really clear and it has to be in their favor. And right now I don't see um, a motive or a reason for him to call one uh, that results in something positive and not just kind of a complaint sesh by the premiers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Shakir, would it be positive for him? And I, I, the reason I ask this is because if he has them all in the same room, can he sort of come out of that and say, well, you guys didn't come to the table with any viable solutions here. And in a, in a, in a sense, he does thrive in those situations when he is at, at the center of all attacks. I don't see any situation where this is positive for the prime minister. I think for the premiers, listen, there's obviously, you know, you're seeing poll after poll, majority of Canadians would like a pause of some sort, smaller, smaller portions, but, you know, scrap the carbon tax altogether. So, Politically, for the premiers, you know, to keep on beating this drum makes a lot of sense. But for the prime minister, I mean, press conference, press conference after press conference over the last few days, he's been pretty clear, you know, no more carve outs, uh, no pauses. And you can have your own plan, but you have to put a price on carbon. So I think the premiers understand the framework that he's working from. Uh, 
if they can agree on anything from the summit, it might be that, you know, maybe industrial emitters should still have a price on carbon. But it's really that consumer levy piece that I don't think the prime minister will win on and they're not going to see eye to eye on. But I think, listen, Pierre Paul has done a good job pointing out, you know, um, gas prices, which is a day to day thing that people see every single day. The price increase on your food, the price increase on home heating. And it's resonated. I think when people hear Prime Minister Trudeau's rebuttal in terms of, you know, eight out of 10 Canadians um, are better off with the carbon price. Uh, I think we live in an environment where people are just so um, distrusting of government to say that eight out of 10 Canadians get more than they pay into the carbon price. It really does make you scratch your head and you kind of ask yourself, wow, this doesn't really seem like it adds up. And I think as long as there's this lack of clarity, this misunderstanding, you know, this this doubt, I think Premier, Prime Minister Trudeau is going to be on his back foot. And we've said many times on these panels, they've done a poor job of articulating how the rebate actually works. And as long as they have that position, they're not going to change public opinion to benefit them. Yeah, Kathleen, it would seem that the math isn't clear, but recently what we have seen as, as being clear is him calling out premiers and right. saying, if you've got a better idea, then come to the table with it. And yeah. Wab Canoe, the NDP premier of Manitoba, said, OK, I'll work on it. Yeah. Show me your work, right? It's like yeah. math class in, in grade five <laughs> where your teacher actually made you write out the answer, not just... And that's what they need to do. These premiers... Listen, if I was advising Andrew Fury, Premier Andrew Fury, I, I would advise him to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Call for a summit. But if I was advising Prime Minister Trudeau, it would say, no way. I mean, we learned this lesson in 2009. Mm -hmm. It was actually Prime Minister Harper who called the summit of the first ministers. These right. are the premiers across the country um, to discuss the, uh, the fiscal crisis. And after that meeting, which was so disastrous, was political grand standing he was beaten up and Harper didn't meet with the premiers ever again right like in six years went by without any meeting it was only actually uh prime minister trudeau who actually brought back the the tradition of having more often first minister meetings but um, i don't think he should meet with them um because why would you sit in the room they're already beating him up as much as he can mm -hmm. on the outside why would mm -hmm. he take more of that but i think what uh premier canoe is doing is interesting he's going to actually show how this can be done remember this federal carbon tax you know, is only there because the provinces chose not to design their own systems. We have had five, count them, five federal elections that have basically been consumed with a, with a, a carbon tax mm -hmm. from 2008 all the way up to 2021. And it's been fought and debated. Sure, the narrative is different this time. People are fed up with it because of the affordability crisis. But if they, the premiers want to change, um, they can design their own plans. And what the federal government needs to do is hold steadfast to their targets and steadfast to their principles of enforcement. And Laura, when you look at, uh, you know, some of the pre premiers and the appearances that they had at the parliamentary committee, I mean, some believe that they did themselves a disservice by appearing. Scott Moe, as Sabrina mm -hmm. mentioned, admitted that his government considered other ways to set a price on carbon and then decided that it would just cost too much. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the premiers put themselves in the hot seat a little bit. Of course, they were there to complain and criticize the carbon tax and they had their opening remarks where they were able to do that and and get those clips that so many of them use on their own social media and for their own followers kind of reinforcing how their own supporters already view things but then you know the tables did turn and i think the liberals are are beginning to relish this a little bit you've seen a lot more pushback i think from from liberal members and members of the of the liberal cabinet i saw stephen Guibeau, the environment minister wrote a column defending carbon pricing in the national post uh, so obviously they are, you know, of all places. So um, obviously speaking to a different audience there and, and beginning to defend themselves and challenging, as, as all the panelists have said, um, the premiers to come up with their own viable plans and to talk about, um, you know, using Canadian technology to lower the emissions in other countries, for instance. Well, is that realistic? Or we're talking about uh, technology that isn't going to be instituted 10 or, or until 10 or 15 years down the road. I think the Liberals are talking about those things too, uh, but they are trying to, to turn the tables now. Um, is that enough to turn public opinion? We are in the middle of an affordability crisis. Uh, according to, to polling, the majority of the public it does seem to have baked in their opinion about the about the carbon price, whether it's it's fair or not. It's getting blamed for a lot of the problems that people are encountering right now. So it's an uphill battle, but I think you see the Liberals digging in their heels and, and really trying to put the pressure back on the provinces to, to come up with a solution of their own. Sabrina, do you think that now we're past April 1st, which, you know, seemed almost like this cataclysmic event that was about to happen and, oh my God, it was coming in. Do you think that now 
people will get used to the three cents per liter, maybe begrudgingly. Uh, do you think that the prime minister and the liberals will actually feel like, OK, we're going to start to claw back in this fight and really sort of win back the narrative at all? I think so, in conjunction with a lot of the other affordability announcements that they've made. And I think we're going to talk about that later. But, you know, when they talk about renters, housing, um, child care, all those other announcements that they're making, I think, and you see the economy start to improve and we, we avoid a recession, I think that cumulative effect will allow them to claw back and allow them to come back into this conversation. And I think what will hurt premiers, um, especially premiers in, you know, especially in Alberta, especially Saskatchewan, is as you see the intensity of the summer season and drought uh, come on, which taxpayers are paying for, wildfire season come on, which taxpayers are paying for, in fact, triple what they were paying for in, in years past, um, that's going to hurt them, right? And that's going to hurt them in this climate change conversation because they can't really justify or come to the table with any plans on climate change and protecting the environment and protecting taxpayers from those massive costs that they're about to see um, hit their personal checkbooks or their personal insurance when you talk about drought or you talk about wildfires and your house being consumed by that. So I do think that the Liberals have um, some ground, some steady, you know, stable ground to stand on as they come back in this conversation. Shagir, I've got 30 seconds on this, but how does this change how Pierre Polyev maybe frames it when you consider what Sabrina just said? I mean, it's not like he's going to be able to go around the country with wildfires burning, saying that, mm -hmm. you know, that the, the issue with climate change, uh, you know, shouldn't be considered. Yeah, so, I mean, listen, we know Pierre likes simple slogans, and I think acts of tax has gone beyond just a carbon tax. I think it's a phrase that encompasses a lot of the frustrations folks have with the Liberals, whether it's around the affordability crisis, uh, whether it's around, you know, just their, them feeling they're out of touch with the rest of Canadians. I think it's gone beyond just carbon tax pricing. You look at some of the ads over the weekend talking about acts of tax. They incorporate the beer tax on this. You look at what Pierre says, April Fool's tax hike. They don't even call it the carbon tax anymore. So I think it doesn't really change much for Pierre. His narrative is very focused. And I think for people who are upset with the liberal government, the acts of tax slogan allows you to grab and pick and choose what you don't like about the liberals and focus your energy and your anger through that phrase and that slogan.